Hello everybody, welcome to another blog workshop. My name is Nikita Fox for Eternity from the wonderful blog factory and we got a lot on the table today because today we're going to be looking at five things that Eternity Sophia language can do that Ethereum Solidity smart contract language can't. We're going to check out what all the fuss is all about and why all this stuff should matter to you even if you're not a techie. Let's go check it out. So Overflows is a feature that actually Solidity has and it's super annoying at best and costs you millions at worst. And if what the heck is an overflow is what you're asking right now, here's a short primer for you. Ethereum's virtual machine, which executes the Solidity smart contracts, has a limited number size. So if your number exceeds that limit on the upper or lower end, it just rolls over or wraps around to the opposite side of the numerical spectrum. Like this counter would jump to zero again if you would be using it for a few more hours. So why this should be relevant to you? In fact, this mechanic has been used countless of times to hack token contracts for millions of dollars of damage. See, in fact, a token is a number with 18 zeros and this number can get even larger when doing batch transactions. So in fact, since version 080, the contract execution throws an error in Solidity, but this can also lead your contract to being stuck in a very undesired state. So but in eternity, you don't have to deal with any of this BS. Make your numbers as large as you would like to the fate virtual machine in the Eternity protocol will take care. Only the gas limit applies. So literally the first thing that anyone new to Solidity encounters is Why can't contract calls return anything? Yes you can, but only from static function calls the ones that don't write any data to the chain. If you sent a transaction that executed a smart contract and altered data on the chain and you want to present those results to your user immediately in the very transaction, then Solidity got the following bad news for you. Ethereum's transactions have no means for storing return data in order to present it to the user. For the sake of keeping the chain data size small, Developers are stuck with two options, store the resulting data inside the contract and make the user pay for the storage costs and fetch it after the transaction was mined, putting extra load on the node, or emit events and make applications listen to them, which can be tedious and unreliable. The amount of data you can pass with events is very limited also. On the Eternity protocol, Return data is added to the transaction result object, so it can be immediately presented to the user. It is pruned from the chain data at a later point to keep the chain data size small. This one's my personal favorite, and if you're wearing suits for work, this might even be a deal breaker for you. So you tokenize those real estates and want to pay out dividends to all the token holders using the smart contract. Oops. You can't even get a list of all of them. Token balances are stored inside a so-called mapping in Solidity, which maps a token holder's address to his balance. But you can't get a list of them all from the smart contract directly. Your only option is to build something that stores every new token owner into a separate array, which can make a transaction up to three times as expensive. Sophia to the rescue. You can easily transform your map to a list. Keep in mind though that this operation is getting more expensive the more entries the map has. Also the actions you might perform on any entry takes up gas too. To not have your contract call hit the gas limit, pause the growth of your map for a moment and process only a subset of the resulting lists on each call. I wanted to deploy a new token contract and pass it a mapping with some balances right away. Or even return the mapping with all balances from your function call. Or even some more sophisticated data. In Solidity there's some data types that you cannot pass as function call parameters or return from contract calls. In Sophia you can have lists of tuples of lists of maps of... You get the idea. 
full freedom to pass any type of data to and return from functions. Block S is the only limit again for parameter data here. And last but not least, a feature again that Solidity actually has that has caused a major fork in the Ethereum protocol in its early days and has been since then so frowned upon that Eternity cut it out right away. You know what I'm talking about. Contract re-entrancy. Sometimes you want to allow a contract to call another contract in the case of buying something with a token, for example. If you accidentally forget to, say, withdraw the price for a purchase prior to that, a transaction could use the called contract to re-enter your contract again in the same transaction and take multiple goods while paying only once. This is called the re-entrancy attack. In Sofia, re-entrancy is impossible by default. And the techies among you probably know already what I'm talking about here. The infamous DAO hack. So, I know, I know, I know. Reentrancy has since then been used in some Ethereum standards for some good deeds also. But Eternity willingly sacrificed those so you can wash your hands clean of all of this. <laughs> that was it for today. I hope you learned a lot again, guys. I would love to see you in the forum. We actually got a secret developer Discord chat. Check it out if you can find it. <laughs> and if you're interested in more technical content on Eternity, you know, hit like, subscribe, ring the bell, feature cat, clear up your room, you know, the usual YouTube stuff. And hope to see you again in the next video. Bye.